Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today I'm going to show you how to make roti. I find that in the kitchen, often, some of the things that have the fewest ingredients are the most hardest to perfect. Something like a souffle or a crepe. And in my family, there is one person that has truly perfected making roti. That's my Auntie Shah, my Auntie Shamani, Auntie Shah for short. Auntie Shah's roti is like a little piece of heaven. It is light, it is fluffy, it's flaky, it's buttery, it's kind of sweet, and there's no sugar in it. She has this magic technique of making roti, and she's been making it for as long as I can remember. When I moved to New York and I started making Tamil food at home, I tried making my own roti and it was not great. It was okay, but it wasn't great. So when I would visit home, when I would go back to Toronto, I'd go to my Auntie Shah's house and I started watching her. And then I started asking her questions and she started giving me lessons. So I would take her technique, bring it back here, try it out, and then figure out what I was doing wrong. It's taken me about six years of doing this over and over and over and over again to finally get to a place where I feel like I know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna show you what I do, and I'm gonna explain all the subtle nuances that I've picked up over the years from Auntie Shah. And try it at home. But don't be daunted. This is not going to come out well, maybe, the first time. But with practice and with experimenting, you'll figure out your own way of doing this. And uh, just keep working on it, and it'll get better and better and better, hopefully. A few simple ingredients to make roti, which is what makes this so wonderful. It's cheap and it's fast when you know how to do it. Flour, baking powder, salt oil and some water warm water the oil that's used is corn oil that's what auntie shah likes to use so that's what i use and it should be in a container that enables you to pour it in a thin steady stream so don't just pour it out of the container it comes in in the store put it in something that allows you to just drizzle out a little bit i'll show you what my auntie shah has her oil in This is the this is a this is a hack in many immigrant households. Like this is what nonnas do as well. The old soap <laughs> the old soap bottle gets washed out, oil goes in there, and then you can squeeze it. You squeeze it. You squirt it in a stream. So this is what Auntie Shah does. Let's use this today. There are so many aspects of this process that my Auntie Shah doesn't even know she's doing that contribute to making the most wonderful roti. She's like, you just do this, and you just do this, and you just mix it in, and just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, and just a little bit warm. So I go there and I watched her, and then I come home and I'm like, wait, why is it like this? And oh, this was wrong, and what didn't she explain that she doesn't even know she's doing? I'm gonna tell you all those minute details while I'm doing them, because they're important. The first thing is to put the flour in a, in a bowl or a tray even that allows it to be more shallow than deep. You don't want it to be in a small bowl where the flour is stacked up because you want the liquid to hit it over a wide area. So I'm using this big bowl and I'm not going to put a lot of flour in. I'm also not going to give you any measurements because she doesn't measure. So I'm going to train you the way that I was trained. just by winging it and eyeing it. So I have a, a nice big bowl. I'm going to put my flour into the bowl. So for that amount of flour, I'll get about four rotis. You can't really do this in a large quantity. You can't make like 20. The max that my aunt makes is about eight to 10 at a time. And then if she needs to make more, she'll start another batch. And it goes quickly once you know how to do this flour in the bowl, spread it out so that it's shallow 
so that it's not like piled up like this. You want it, that's why we're using a big bowl with a little bit of flour, so that it has a large surface area onto which the liquid will be placed. A little bit of salt, just a little bit. The next ingredient is baking powder. When I ask Auntie Shah how much, just a pinch, just a little bit, and she just goes like this. Enough. <laughs> That's how she showed me. So I'm I'm keeping it real and I am showing you exactly how she showed me. Okay? Then she took her hand, mixed it around, and then she's like, now you add some oil. Just a little bit. So this is what she did. See? Little bit. And then she went like this. Now, I noticed from many, many, many attempts at doing this, that when I overly mixed that oil into the flour, the roti didn't come out very well. It was kind of tough. When I mixed it just lightly, and then I watched Auntie Shah do it again, I actually took a video of her and analyzed it. She just ran her hand through it once or twice. And what that does is it keeps the oil in these, you can feel these balls of oil in the flour. It's not evenly distributed and you don't want it to be evenly distributed. It's kind of like making pastry and not overworking the butter into the flour, cutting it in so that it's distributed, but not making it so that it's dissolved into the flour. Same thing with the oil, just very loosely mixed and I can feel clumps of oil. That's what you want. The next step is the trickiest, most difficult thing to ascertain. How much water to put in and how to get it in there properly. Because she has the water running from the faucet while she holds the bowl underneath, mixing it together. And it needs to be warm water, not hot, not tepid, but warm and the water amount in this flour it needs to be enough water to pull it together to make a soft dough this is why this is so hard it's not a dough that's sticky and it's not a dough that is so flaky that it's falling apart it needs to bring it together so that it's it's just a soft dough that's how i can explain it to you and you'll see what i mean while the water is hitting the flour, you need to mix it in with your hands as the water is hitting the flour. But there is something about this stream of water touching the flour and oil mixture and mixing it together at the same time. There's some magical moment there that makes this dough potential to being rolled out and then put onto the griddle and then flaking. Okay, it's warm. This is going to go fast now. Ready? This is what she does. You see how fast that was? Do you see why it always stressed me out watching her? I'm like, wait, 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 wait. She's, and she didn't say, she wouldn't say anything. She wouldn't say anything because you can't wait. This part has to be done quickly. And she would always say, sometimes it doesn't come out good. She's like, even for me, sometimes, I don't know why, but it just, it just wasn't good. And that's because there are so many variables in this process and there is no measuring and there's no there's no weighing of anything and there's no timing of anything. It is so homemade, it is so rustic that it is just in her bones at this point. She's been doing it for 30 years every day and it's why it's perfect. So this is what it should look like. I hope you noticed that when I pulled it together, I just gathered all the bits of dough together and lightly squeezed them together. I didn't overly mix it. There was no hard pressing repeatedly. The dough just needs to come together. And at this point, this stage is done. 
don't keep mixing it. When it's like this, it gets formed into balls. Get a container that will accommodate this dough with very little remaining space for air. This dish will fit this amount of dough and there won't be a lot of room at the top, which is perfect. And at this point, take some oil, put some oil on the palm of your hand, on both palms, and break this into four balls. Two, three, four. And then, very lightly, this is the motion that she does. Squeeze, and then turn it, squeeze again, and turn it, squeeze again, and turn it. Don't squish and knead the dough in the palm of your hand. That's not what's happening here. This is just lightly being massaged, keeping that outer dough on the outside. I'm not folding it over at all. And what this is doing is it's warming it and it's just massaging it and it makes it softer. You want these balls of dough to be very soft, not sticky, not flaky at this point, but just soft, like beautiful little dough pillows. And the more you do this, the softer it'll get. But at this point, you're only gonna do it a few times. And then it goes in here. A little more oil. The next one, just a few, just a few times. Coat it with oil, put it in the dish. Next one, squeeze, 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 lightly, lightly, lightly turning. And the two that I'm gonna put on top, I'm gonna put the other way. Squished like this and put on top. And then this gets covered and it should be set aside just at room temperature on the countertop for at least an hour. It's, it's actually much better if you leave it for two hours or three hours. You can even after three or four hours put it in the fridge and take it out five or six hours later or even the next day. The dough will change in its consistency the longer it's left. It'll become more glutinous and kind of sticky almost. Every now and then, like every half an hour or so, come back to the dish, pick up each ball, give it a little gentle massage, and rotate them in the dish. So these two that were on the top, what I would do is do that and then put them on the bottom. And then these two that were on the bottom, and already I can feel the two that were on the bottom are a little wetter. They go on the top. And then this gets covered again. It always has to remain covered. So you do that, leave it for an hour at least. Two, three hours is ideal. Here is the dough after it sat for like four hours. It really has changed in its consistency. And this is what we do right before we roll it out. Just give it another nice little massage. It should be really soft. That's the goal. Okay, rolling. Before you start rolling, turn your pan on and allow it to heat slowly. Have some flour in a dish ready. Take the ball, flatten it out a little, press it into the flour, and then roll it out. And you can add flour as needed to roll it out to about a sixteenth of an inch. And now this gets put onto the griddle. Once it goes onto the griddle, things go pretty fast. So you want to set things up so that you have everything at your ready. You need some butter and Set the butter out so that it's at room temperature. Put it close to the pan. The other thing is this pan. This pan should only be used for roti. I have tried making this in a cast iron pan. It doesn't come out well. This is what my auntie Shaw uses. Just a steel griddle that was from an Indian store. She uses it only for roti, for nothing else, and she never washes it ever. So it becomes kind of grimy and I do exactly what she does. You just let it cool and then you put it away. Don't ever put water on that thing. Now this gets stretched out. 
after it's rolled out, she stretches it out by hand to make it slightly thinner. And this is what she would say, not too thin. <laughs> not too thin, but don't leave it too thick either. I love it. Love the challenge. Okay. Now, as soon as it's on there, slice some butter, get it prepared, and then just put it on. Can't be afraid of using your hands when you need to. The bubbles are starting to appear, spread around that butter as it's melting. And now, I'm going to flip it. And the bubbles should be golden brown. They should not be black. If they are black, this is going to turn into a crisp puppetum, which is what you don't want. And you should hear that sizzle. Leave this for a couple of seconds. And bu bubbles are now forming on the underside. Then I fold this in half and reposition this so that the outer edge is now in the middle of the griddle, the hottest part. And I flip this and I turn it into something with quarters. With again, the outer edge, which is the thickest part, now at the center of the griddle, so that that outer edge is cooking at the most intense heat. Flip this once more. Ah, it's so satisfying. And then that, it's put into something with a lid. Next, next one. It is flaky, it is light, it is warm, it is soft. So this roti with some homemade chicken curry. Simple, simple, simple food. Simple everyday food in my culture. And honestly, I have eaten in Michelin star restaurants. I have eaten in highfalutin fancy places. And very often when I'm sitting there eating that food, I think, eh, still not as good as Auntie Shah's roti with a nice, beautiful chicken curry. It's delicious. It's divine. What do you think? Think you might like to attempt this? Give it a try. Try it out. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, making roti. If you like this video, just give it one of these. If you didn't, give it one of these. But please, please, please subscribe to my channel so that we can continue to make videos just like this one. Mmm, 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 mmm. So good. <laughs>